Are you the, the countdown, Taylor? Three, two, and then we're pressing play. One. Mm-mm. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a very special episode of Geekverse Podcast. It is time for Geekverse Podcast. And you know what that means? I am the Clown Prince, a podcast dress now, and I'm joined by the Orange Juice Lover, Mr. <laughs> Taylor Field, mm-hmm. uh, Man in the Red Chair, uh, your friendly neighborhood caster, Kirkland Patsy, someone with a big cat beside him. <laughs> I am the pixelated Jessica. <laughs> and then we have a special guest with us. Uh, she's been on After Nine, so if you listen to that, uh, more formally introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I am the sex bob band member, <laughs> Summer Hansy. Right, there you go. There you go. <laughs> on theme. There you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you haven't done or seen us doing these before, these are Patreon watch alongs. We did this with Carl for The Flash, and we did this with Aaron Braden for uh, us, and we're going to do this for Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. So, Hansi, so we usually do that at the end of the cast, but first, plug anything you want to right now because, you know, why, you know, why not? You know, and yeah. then second of all, why was this the one that you picked for us to watch, and what is your history? Oh. You already showed us a few things before cast, so we kind of know that uh, yeah. you're, you're, you're obviously into this movie, but what was the reasoning? For and like sure. I said, where can they find you, and what are you doing? Yeah, so um, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at dhhancy. Um, my band sees on Sapphire. Follow us everywhere. Our EP is on everything, and I just put a solo EP out on all platforms. Just search Summer Hancy on you'll find it. Follow me on SoundCloud, etc. Um, I picked Scott Pilgrim because I've always really loved it. It's one of my favorite movies ever, and um, uh, twenty. 20 was the 10 year anniversary of it so i thought it would be a good time to like talk about it and see how it holds up 10 years later and yeah i have quite a few cute little toy collectibles so big fan and i thought it'd be fun to watch it definitely in the geek world i feel like Mm -hmm. Good thing we wait till 2021, and that was all on us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it works. So, it works. Yeah. Before we start, I just want to ask, when has everyone here seen this already? And, like, do you remember when the last time you watched it? Was it, like, in theaters, or have you watched it since? Taylor? In theaters, 10 years ago. Oof. Oh, really? Wow. That was the last time you saw it? Only once? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kirkland said with, like, all lots right. of... Lots of, uh, like... Accusatory. Yeah. <laughs> hey, only once, <laughs> 10 years ago. Like, oh, why did I see you watching it the other day? No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, so I've seen the movie once, I think. Uh, it was on Netflix. And for whatever reason, I just don't remember much of the movie. Maybe I was, like, falling asleep or just wasn't too into it. And I'm really excited to watch it again because I, like, just found out that it was based in Canada, which I think is hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and... I, I, I only remember like certain scenes, so I'm excited to see how wacky they are if I am remembering them right. It's <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, I've seen this movie a billion times. So, <laughs> yeah, is, probably is the this... last time I watched it was maybe like six months ago. Would you say <laughs> this is probably in your top ten for movies? Uh, yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just what about you? For sure. Uh, I saw it in theaters and absolutely loved it. I have not seen it a billion times, but definitely, (laughs) uh, you know, more than I can count on my fingers. Um, I don't know when the last time I watched it was, but I do own it on DVD, but I'd probably say maybe at least a year ago. So it's been a while. So I'm excited to watch it again because there are like those little memories that I'm like, oh, I know this part's great. And I know there's like, there's this little clip. And so I'm excited to watch it again. I'm surprised that actually Taylor and Kirkland have only seen it like once though. And I think, won't spoil it, but I think Travis has only seen it once too. I've seen it twice. I saw it years ago and then I watched it again yesterday because I always watch the commentary track movies before just because I like to like get a refresher as well because I know we'll talk over them. But uh, yeah, I, I, I love the style of the movie. It's it's I'll get into it more. I, I think as I've gotten older, I like Edgar Wright more. I think my uh, problem with this one was always I... I hate Scott Pilgrim, like the character, like that guy, like just the way he is. But, you know, like there, there, there's an art, but there's just uh, it, it just it, there's some fun stuff in there. But it's it's so crazy like because I'm a big comic book fan. So when you watch that and then you or you read those and watch this, it's so funny, like 
couple of years ago when Spider Verse came out. There's so many like parallels to that. I see like the speech bubbles and things like that. So mm-hmm. it's definitely a movie ahead of its time. And I always wonder like what would happen if it came out later. But at the same time, like Spider Verse came out and it did well, but it didn't like destroy box office. That so it's always like I just wonder. It's just like oh, is this stuff that's really cool just sometimes just too cool for mainstream audiences? You know, it's just you know. And I I don't even know because I don't even remember seeing trailers. I think how I saw this was just. A lot of friends like you guys, you guys see us, and then I was over at someone's place and we watched together. I didn't see it in theaters, but I don't even remember. I will have to watch a trailer for it. I don't even know, like, how did they market this movie? Is my question. I remember because... seeing trailers for it. I remember. Being well, I'm not saying they're not real. Yes. Just, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> if, what was in these trailers? I got the like, how do you market this tapes. movie? Uh, I remember seeing Superman. Uh, I don't remember the actor's name, but the guy that played Superman. Oh, Brandon Ralph. Okay. Brandon, yeah. yeah. And then I remember thinking that he was another superhero in this in this movie. And then I just thought it was like like a like a, another weird, I don't know, kind of different comic book movie than we had been getting, but still mm-hmm. sort of a comic book movie. I remember it kind of being advertised like that. I don't know yeah, if anyone um, else here is on TikTok at all, but actually recently, just like the past couple months, there was a trend um, with the hair coloring like she's not even that pretty or whatever it is yeah um, when it comes up but there was a big trend i wonder how that affected this movie if there was a rush of people that watched it again because of that or not or what but yeah i'm sure um have have any of you read the books the comics no, no. Okay, i've read all of them so i'm excited to talk about that too so like was compare. it was it that's i was going to ask were they is it kind of like what a regular comic book would be where it's a bunch of issues or was it put all together as like a big graphic novel it's, or what was there's it? There's six books. Okay. Um, and so the second book is actually called Scott Pilgrim versus the world. The first book is called Scott Pilgrim's precious little life. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, and the, the books really all um, take place over like a year and this movie mm-hmm. kind of takes place over like three weeks so that's the main difference but um, same tone a lot of stuff is taken straight from the books so I'll, yeah. I'll try and point that stuff out I'm very ex- I, I'm very excited to uh, like ask you some questions as we go along because yeah I've never read them I'm I'm a complete like marvel dc shill like i I, like i always want to read other stuff but anytime someone recommends me things i just look at my backlog of those i'm like oh man i have like a year's worth of that stuff i haven't even read but no people love this so do you guys have anything to say before we all hit play at the same time i am ready to go i'm excited i saw you run away (laughs) for a second well i I gotta like i gotta like listen to when you guys hit play and i gotta like lay on the floor and stretch out and hit play over there to play you know the remote yeah what the fuck Nope. Where's Madison? Get Madison to hit play. <laughs> All right, Madison, you got to go hit play for me. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to be a gentleman. Okay, whenever you're re- uh, Taylor, are you is she, oh, she is there. Is she's being attacked by cats. There's just so many cats going around here. <laughs> yeah, <we're cats. laughs> okay, cats. so Taylor, I'm going to give you a five second countdown and if you can get over there, okay? Wait, are we, okay, are we pressing on play on one or on go? Oh, this is like the Pineapple Express debate. So I'm going to go, I'm going to one, I'll say go. So one, go. That's all. On go. Yeah, on go. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so go, go, right? I'm going to go. Uh, <laughs> five, uh, four, three, two, one, go. All so right. Now you seeing the very snappy Universal logo. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's very yeah. cool. So I love this. So I own this movie on Blu-ray. I, the, yesterday and today is like the first few times I watched it. I got it as a stocking stuffer years ago. Um, so I put it in and Emily didn't know if I was watching it online or something like that. And she's like, this looks like a really bad copy. Like, cause she's on the logo, <laughs> but like, no, that's just the... <laughs> That's just the thing. Yeah. And that's that's maybe why this movie was so niche. The second the studio saw it in Toronto, Canada, they're like, how do we market this? It takes place in Canada. Like, what do we do here? <laughs> Great. Score. I really would like to go visit a lot of the stuff in Toronto in this movie. I think mm-hmm. that'd be awesome. Toronto from I've never been to Toronto, but I hear is it's kind of like the most American place in Canada. So yeah, yeah. you yeah. could feel right at home. I've had I've had those nice. vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I remember the first time watching this and being like, oh my god, 22. And now it's just like, <laughs> oh, 22. 22. <laughs> I'm going to be 22 on the 28th. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> I remember, like, just even, like, there's 
people I forget about in this, but the stacked is so like quietly cast. And I feel it's funny that the people like Chris Evans, Brie Larson that have these minor yeah. roles are like the biggest stars now, like Oscar winners, Captain America. Yeah. You know, it's it's all so funny. Like, like can't see saying it's 10 years old and just seeing how much has changed. And I always put that girl's name with the ginger hair, but I always thought she was going to be such a big star and she's still in stuff, but I always watch her. It's like, Oh, she's going to blow up one day, but yeah, um, Ellen Wong that played Knives Chow. This was her very first movie. Really? Okay. Yeah. She's what else has she been that. in? I don't know. Not much, I think. But I'm not 100% sure. Just the way you said that this was her first movie, I was like, oh, okay. So, like, yeah, yes, maybe but... she's gone on to do more work. I don't know. But this is her first movie. I love this. <laughs> I like knife sweater. I want one of those. I haven't found a nice green sweater for myself. Is it you want to sleep in it? Of course. I don't care anymore. I just I just embrace it now. Check out After Nine, the Christmas special. We talked about that. But um <laughs> what was everyone's first experience with Michael Sarah? I'm gonna see if we all have the same one. What was the first thing you ever saw him in? Probably this, oh, okay. honestly. And then Arrested say, Development. Yeah, I was gonna say probably Arrested Development, but I feel like I'm not too confident on that answer. I'd probably have to go with super bad. <laughs> That's too, for me super bad because yeah. I didn't watch Rest of Development. And I had no idea who he was, and then Super Bad came in and just blew up. I just remember that summer that movie came up. I had to watch it. I did pay for it eventually, but I had to watch it illegally because I was not old enough to see it. But I was like, I'm gonna see this movie that everyone's talking about, and yeah. man, it, it lived up to the hype in that uh, era. Taylor, what about you? When was the first time you saw Michael Sarah? Look at those moves Michael Sarah's doing with his hips right there. <laughs> okay well he's not going so i'll go super yeah, bad fine. was my first as well because i'm looking and there's nothing before that that i recognize mm-hmm. in any way she'd perform yeah and then he did a movie the next year or I was, can't juno, was juno was oh, juno after super bad in the mm, same year he was very close i think because that's 2008 juno i think no, so, 2007 as well They're oh, both okay it's the same year that's a good year for him his agent was like so uh, happy. yeah <laughs> super bad was August and Juno was fallish, probably right. December, yeah. So super bad was first. Yeah. yeah, no, and then he did some movie the following year where he had like an evil version of himself. I can't remember what it was. It was like youthful something. Oh and, yeah, yeah. I just I, remember because there was this scene with this girl where he's trying trying to apply lotion on her, and it like it, it doesn't. Of course, teen comedy doesn't go the way you'd want it to as a <laughs> young male, but. <laughs> And what about Edgar Wright? Have you guys, because Edgar Wright for me, that's the same thing. I, I've started to like his stuff more because I remember, and same thing with this, I feel like I liked this more than the first time I saw it. Same with Shaun the Dead. I liked it, but then when I saw it again later in life, I liked it more. And Baby Driver is my favorite, but I feel like I always get judged by Edgar Wright people. They're always like, well, that's his most, mi-. my fucking, because these credits are doing a number on me. Uh, everybody is always just like, oh, of course, Baby Driver, that's his most mainstream movie. I'm like, I just like it. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> what, about, what about you, Hansi? Because you're obviously a fan of this. Are you a big fan of the rest of his work? Or is this kind of like I've, I've only seen this and Baby Driver. Mm-hmm. So uh, I would like to like watch the others, but I just have not gotten to it yet. Baby Driver's all right. <laughs> he did Ant-Man? No, he, he he was supposed to. Trained, he was supposed to. And he, yeah. He was attached to it before Marvel got bought out and they did the whole like we're gonna do a plant cinematic universe. And for he has a writing credit on the first one, but um yeah, it it, it didn't it didn't go down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm looking. I mean, I like Shaun of the Dead, I like Hot Fuzz, I mm-hmm. like Baby Driver, like the world's end, so Apparently, there's a Baby Driver 2 coming out. Apparently, yeah. I don't know why, but they're going to make it. Well, <laughs> but I think it's like his biggest money earning film of all time, Baby Driver. It was a big hit that summer. So it was huge on um, like Reddit, too. Tons of little Easter eggs all over the move, like oh, our yeah. movies. And he's great for that. Even in this one, like the amount of just stuff in it is just because he's just pulling from like, obviously, like you, I'm not sure how it is. Hans, you might be able to talk about in the actual books. But as far as like in the movie, from what I just see, like this stuff right here at the phone is very Spider-Verse and very comic booky and stuff. But yeah, just, like, it just pulls from like video games, anime from the little bit I've seen of it. Comic books. It's just like kind of a just a blender of great stuff. Oh, Anna Kendrick. Yeah. And this whole first part of the movie, like, is 
pretty much taken right out of the books with the, like the labeling on everything. Um, mm. Even the, the P bar thing that pops up in a second. Um, mm. And Stacy, that name tag she's wearing is the author of um, the books, his sister. <laughs> so okay. she's in the books as well, based on his real sister. And mm. that's her real name tag. Hmm. Fun fact. <laughs> that is fun I have fact. a lot of those. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Would anyone ever actually name their child knives? I just feel Probably like that's not. such. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's a knives out there. <laughs> Travis, would you They're ever name make your next Google. kid Knives? Why would I name it Knives? I'm just wondering if anyone would actually ever name their child Knives. No, <laughs> I'm sure there would be, but I, I don't. I, I don't see Knives in my future. But <laughs> but yeah, so. How is Scott Pilgrim in the comic books? Because obviously, like, it's, you know, if people are listening or watching this first time, I guess it's a weird way to do that. But I feel like they're not. So near the end of this movie, there's kind of like an arc, right? Like, he realizes he's been a jerk for a lot of it. But how did, I think that's one of the things that initially, and it's still just like, he's such a little pompous asshole, like, the whole time. It's just, yeah. and, and just because I feel like nice, because eventually they, you know, they kind of make her, like, really clingy and crazy. But at the beginning she's just like she's a nice normal person so there's not like you kind of see that trope in these type of movies where it's like he's dating someone but everyone's like oh she's the bitch or like we all hate her but you don't get that with knives so what right. is he like in this because there's so many times where she's yeah. asking about being famous and he's like yeah like uh yeah but i'm like i'm pretty famous and i got a blog and all this stuff like he's very pompous so what's he like in the in the the adaptions yeah he's definitely an asshole the mm -hmm. whole time in the books it kind of covers a few of the relationships he's had kim the drummer being one of them mm -hmm. and then there's these two other girls that it talks about his relationships with them as well and how he's just kind of been an asshole for years yeah so um yeah really he's bad. kind of the exact same and i feel like at the time people were maybe like michael sarah for scott pilgrim but i think it works out really well Oh yeah. Well, I don't. I, yeah, I don't know what the initial thing is, but I think he, he. I think he pulled it off pretty well. Yeah. It's a long beanie. <laughs> I I just I just never can have that much slack on my beanie. My beanies are like, like right to the head. The two. <laughs> right, like it's, oh no! You gotta them. have the slouch. Well, growing up, I had this one toque where it had like little vent holes, so when you're going down like a toboggan hill, it would like fill up with air, and then you just have like a really <laughs> It is. <laughs> it's a lot of bikes in the snow. That sucks. I've been there before. There's the first X in the snow. Uh, There's seven X's. I see. I didn't catch. Uh, I have never caught that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've actually ever thought to even look for that. Yeah, it's little easter egg i think <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of surprised that they did the x before ramona was introduced foreshadowing looking yeah, right foreshadowing. here look she's coming <laughs> but i mean i guess i could see what you're saying but i also see what i'm saying yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh Look at those bell bottoms. Oof. Kieran Culkin. What a what a career path the Culkins have had. Now this guy's <laughs> on like a super has anyone watched Succession on HBO? If not. No. no, I hear great things about it. He's in it. He's getting Emmy Award noms and everything like that. Like all good for him, but <laughs> <laughs> the transitions are great in this movie. 
And that's yeah. one thing about like it happens later on, but this movie just that's what reminds me a lot of Spire Verse as far as like it always just feels like it's alive, like it's always moving. The 100%. editing is just so it's very much like if you look at Baby Dry, that's probably the best thing you can say about it is the editing is really good. Um, but it's just like like I said, it's always alive, it's always moving, it's always crisp. It's just like I'd love to see the storyboards they did for these movies. For sure. And there's our introduction introduction to Ramona. I kind of forgot, like, I know it's only been 10 years, but I, like, I've seen multiple Amazon packages in this movie, and I kind of forget they were a thing 10 years ago. Like, I know they were, but I just saw yeah. that. It's like, wow, it's been around for a while. It's the same thing, like, later on when we get to it, but there's some jokes at a certain type of uh, people that eat certain things, and I feel like they are really ahead of their time because, like, it's such, like, an in-joke now. I'll mention it when we get to it, but... Right. So it so this but in that point oh, that Travis ahead. was talking, there was like four transitions. So mm-hmm. that's just how quick everything yeah. happens too. Yeah. So it this is would you say like a combination of the first and second book as far as a adaption? Um, it covers the whole thing. They kind okay. of smash all the X's into this one movie, but um, in the books it's pretty much like one X mm-hmm. per book. Okay. So, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, they filmed this at an actual frat house. This party scene. Oh, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Spot, oh, look at this collection for only a hundred. 20 bucks. Let's do it. Why not? Is it worth the money, Hansi? The books? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Wow, the, this one girl. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and that light switch that's just like. Yeah. Almost on the That's ceiling. Not up it's to code. Just there. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to reach that. I feel like I've definitely been in a few places, like not a light switch like that, but just like so many places where there's always one thing that's off. And you're like, I don't know how this happened. Like it's not a big deal, but like in the bathroom, like where our like our power outlets are just so close to the actual door, it doesn't really make much sense, but they're there. It's better than being right close to the tub. <laughs> yeah, you're probably you're definitely right with that one. <laughs> he stalked her until left the party. Is there are, there's eleven books? Oh, uh, there's six. There might be like some collected, like certain ones together and everything. Right. <laughs> Got some battle scars, dude. I don't know if that's a good thing. Or bad. Like, <laughs> I love that line delivery from that guy. Uh, Aubrey Plaza, there's somebody too, is just a very underrated actress. People probably still don't know, but like, like they just hear comedy. She's in a lot of other stuff, but I always point out if people haven't seen it, Legion, she's just so good in that. But she's pretty versatile, actually. She's not somebody I would have expected kind of where she's gone now, but um, yeah. Lisa and Holly are the other two people, other two love interests from the books. And mm-hmm. Kim. So how did you feel as far as like the picking of choosing of what they did, what they kept, do you think they did a pretty good job as far as, cause like you said, if they're combining all these stories together, that's always, that's right. all like with any book and something like that, it's always a question. And I guess like with this, it would have been, I think it could have been tough of, let's say they tried to do like Lord of the Rings, be like, Oh, we're going to make three to six of these movies. They might've, I don't know if they could have pitched. You could pitch that as maybe like a, a bigger series, but as a movie, I could see a studio maybe not going for that. So how do you feel as far as them combining all together? Because that's a lot of material to put into, like it's an hour and 48 minutes around there, I think the movie. Mm-hmm. It is. 
yeah. yeah, there's like any book adaptation, you got to take out some of the unnecessary stuff and just get to the point. Mm -hmm. But I read the books after I had seen the movie a few times. So it is a little bit different going from movie to book. Yeah. You know, Um, but I think they're both really good in what they are, but highly recommend the books as well. I forgot to change my lights for Ramona, but you can't see them right now that well. (laughs) Same thing, Anna Kendrick, another person who's completely blown up and Oh, that that transition was great. (laughs) This whole, this part (laughs) here where he orders something and then immediately sits in front of the door waiting for it, it's just, it, I feel that in my soul. Relatable. <laughs> I feel like he just <sighs> Michael Sarah is just such a interesting cat. It's just and it's so funny how the the roles that he's gotten over the years. Yeah, I love him. Mm. I I can't remember the last time I've seen him in anything. Like I know, th- I was just gonna say I know that can't be it, but that was the last time I saw him was this in the end, and that was fantastic. Where he just played yeah. this like this little like he's supposed to be the nice guy, and he's just like bombing <laughs> on everybody and all this stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. And now we have Scott, who's contemplating that maybe he doesn't want to be in this relationship, which is n- never a fun thing. <laughs> <laughs> It's better when you both feel, hey, this is going down not the greatest path, and you kind of get a sense of, oh, maybe this is going to naturally end, or you'll have a conversation. But, but when the other person's still completely on board and you're not, oh, that is uh, not a fun road to be on. <clears throat> and I love this like little scene right here, like, oh, you want to play again? And then they got the countdown on them and everything. <laughs> <laughs> quite the guitar (laughs) seasoned it is yeah vintage (laughs) (laughs) me every time i talk about my band I think it's the same thing with anybody with some like extra activity that they're hoping to grow. It's always you're like, yeah, like I do this thing on the side, and it's not a big deal, but you know, it's pretty fun. And this podcast, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's the same way when people ask. It's like, yeah, it's this and that, and like, I like when people hear about because I'm still just always like, even just always saying the name when I say like, yeah, it's Geek First Podcast, right? Away, it's like, oh, okay, you're in a box. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's not very long. Oh, no soap. <laughs> yeah, in COVID, just not. Age, yeah, not, not <laughs> aging well. It's like the Legend of Zelda theme, isn't it? Like the it's very similar, yeah. yeah. Similar yeah. to the fairy film. It is the music from Zelda. Oh, okay, there you go. And they used is some it? of the sound effects from Zelda as well to be in the movie. How did they, they get that from that? Nintendo? Yeah, that's impressive. Um, I think I read that Edgar Wright wrote a letter to Nintendo and said, this song is the lullaby of this generation or something like that. And then they allowed wow. him to <laughs> use it. Travis, I feel like you could rock glasses like that. Those those sunnies. Oh, I've the one that Ramona's wearing right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've said before, I'm very much ready for, uh, like, obviously, I don't want the apocalypse. I don't want bad things to happen. No, no, no. I don't want those things to happen. But, like, 
obviously in Blade Runner, lots of bad things happen to get mm. them to that point. They're very sci-fi. I'm ready for it. You've seen the Harley Quinn jacket. I wear that now for Gauntlet. I wore that for the stream. I bought it. I would like excuses to wear that in real life. Like, I want to, like... I remember Chris, who I host Marvel Alliance with, there was this picture of Zac Efron recently with his hair, and it was so bleached. He was like, oh, my God, look at this hair. I'm like, I'm very sorry, man, but if I ever get super famous and I got money and can do whatever I want, I'm going to be rocking, like, crazy-ass hair. Like, <laughs> exactly. it's, just, it's just because it's just like, I don't know, it's – people always ask me before, like, and you probably – I know Hansi does and Jessica does, but even when I did the bleach, I'm like, why you do that? You're already blonde. But it's just like, I don't know, like like – it's just regular hair. I mean, I cut it. It'll come back. I want to have some fun with it and do something different. You know, it's just exactly. like, I, I'm my own customizable video game player, you know, like that's the way I look at it. So I got to enjoy life somehow. And it's the little things. Not allowed the colored hair at my work. So I'll live vicariously through you. You're not Travis. allowed. Uh, well, I mean, I probably could be allowed, but it's like a public facing job. Oh, so it's like masturbating on an airplane. It's frowned upon. <laughs> I mean, I haven't tried, so... I, I haven't mean... either, for people out there. That's just a hangover joke. If you're not some hangover, please don't judge my character. <sighs> I'm not allowed to stop you. <laughs> it's in the rules. Is number three, like, super popular? Like, all of the books are, like, $10, except for number three is 20 and I can't find it for $10, and I would just want to know why. I... Number... I don't know. Well, it, so what? So the first film or the first book is just about his life, I guess. No, it's it jumps into the story. Just the title is okay. Scott so do they, go, they all have different titles? Yeah. Do they relatively go in the same order as far as the X's and everything like that? From what I can remember, yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure. So I was trying to think who the third. Who's the third X? Because that would be the third book. Um, maybe maybe Chris Evans. I don't know. I can't <laughs> remember right now. He is my favorite of the axes, but so maybe that's yeah. Just you're good. not surprised. <laughs> well, his character is so he good. This, He's so good in it. Like I I I love any to Chris Chris Evans. Everyone forgets before he became Captain America. He was like. He was always playing douchey roles. Like, that was one of his go-tos. But that this one's, like, the prime douchey role. And it's just, like, they give him so many good one-liners. And... It's funny, too, because in it... my mind, I feel like Chris Evans, like, became popular because of, like, MCU. But he's he was actually in so many things <laughs> before he that. De- he definitely yeah. became, like, the name because of the yeah. MCU. Like, the now superhero. our parents know who he is. But, yeah, before, he, he was in a lot of stuff. But I... I really do think um that saved his career because I, I he was doing stuff but like he was not any doing anything too big like he was in this and then this was two years later but he's in this in like a role right he's not on the main characters or anything and he was he did uh, i guess they were hoping fantastic four was going to be the one but you're the perfect score <laughs> oh. <laughs> Such a good movie. he's gonna win that right now though isn't he in our latest poll that's happening on facebook i actually haven't checked to see who is winning it but now, Taylor, Taylor didn't you say something? Yeah, Taylor, didn't you say something about uh, because when we were talking about watching this about the sex scene, which when I had rewatched it, they don't really have too much sex. But you were talking about as a little Taylor, you remember this? Yeah, <laughs> little, like really, you're 15, 15 year old Taylor. I was in the theater and I was like, "Whoa, this is happening!" I can't remember who my friends were at the time, but I had friends with me. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, sure, Taylor. No. <laughs> Mary Elizabeth Winstead, now Huntress. So, just, well, we're talking about it anyway. Um, so, I have all the names up. So, there's Scott Pilgrim, uh, Precious Little Life, and then Scott Pilgrim versus the World is the second one. So, that's, as Tansy was saying, all the different names. Scott Pilgrim and the Infinite Sadness is three. Scott Pilgrim Gets It Together is four. Scott Pilgrim versus the Universe is five, and then the last one is Scott Pilgrim's Finest Hour. Mm-hmm. Very nice, classic like finale title. Yeah. I'm excited for Geek Verse to do a final hour one day. That probably means we're ending though. So It'll be the most great, depressing but... episode we've ever had. We're just all crying. <laughs> Maybe it'll be something else. Like, well, it'll be a fake retirement, you know. But something for one of our movies or something. Maybe that'll be one of our movie titles. The final. There you hour. go. <laughs> 
So Neva Lex is on the, her phone number. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the snow was like melting as she skated. It's because she's hot. Yeah. Is that what it's supposed to be, you think? Because like, look at it. It just disperses. Yeah. She's his dream girl, literally, right? Yeah. You totally came. Yes, I came. Yeah, I, when I saw that, I I, I like that because this movie is PG thirteen, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I was watching this yesterday, there were so many times where I was like, they found their best way to like skirt that as much as they could. Like obviously they do the swearing yeah. and stuff, but like I feel like they really get as close to the edge of as possible with the 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 MA rating. Uh -huh. Yeah, they. Uh, it was going to have an f-bomb in it they were gonna say fuck but then it would have been rated r because in the film they also say cocky cock oh, okay <laughs> and if they would have had that and the f word then they would have mm. it would have been rated r mm -hmm. so they had to like bleep it out later i think cocky cock was the one to keep too if you had yeah, to keep one. it is <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in that situation, but I feel like if the guy and <laughs> or even the girl, if they were just to run out right away, it's like okay, something bad is happening now. I love this little beat with the, with the boyfriend that's like trying to be straight here. It's really fun. Yeah, this guy reminds me of Frankie Muniz a little bit. It does. <laughs> Taylor and Jessica, do you uh, recognize the singer in this band? The one that looks I like do, Frankie Minas? Yeah. He's from a movie we've done a retrospective of. Was I on the retrospective? Yep. Was I? Nope. Okay. I'm out. He is from Saw 2. He's Eric Matthews' son. Okay. Fun, fun, <laughs> there's my fun fact. <laughs> They're not as good as Summers. I'll give no. you that much. <laughs> I know. I brought my saw fun facts to the Scott Pilgrim <laughs> podcast, but I just always see him like, right, Eric Matthews. You know? Can you please stop standing there, you freaking me out? Just those little beats are all good, too. <laughs> She's got battle scars, man. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm going to take that and use it somewhere else in my day to day. I have to describe someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'll ever do pink, but um, definitely one day green is on that just because of Joker. Before I die, it will happen. I've done green. green. Is fun. Mm -hmm. done pink. I dyed my hair green when I dressed up as Ramona Flowers. <laughs> nice. You got pictures? Um, not of that costume, unfortunately. It was a while ago. Taylor, what about you? You plan on dyeing your hair? You had Taylor and Kirkland. You guys are like the dyeing hair virgins over there. Are we going to see any what? colors one day? I've dyed my yeah, hair. Yeah, I used you to dyed yours my in your hair dyed or green or once. What, Taylor? I used to have my hair dyed green once, but I phased out of it. Okay. I used to dye it blue in the runner of my house from 10 hours Sonic. <laughs> Legit. How old were you? Or was that last week? That was last week, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was young. Uh, dyed my hair blonde with like a black like faux hawk thing for hockey once. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I've had green. Maybe not. Maybe it was just like that gel. Oh, the classic the gel. gel. Yeah. That's what all the boys did. I think it's what it was actually for blue too. Actually, and then I used to get frosted tips back in the day when I was younger. And that was the thing. <laughs> this little girl... Just staring <laughs> on the floor. They're so good. Almost so many bangs in this movie. Like yeah. so many bangs, so many like <laughs> eyebrow, you know. Shagginess all around. Bangs are underrated, man. They sh they protect your eyes. That's what eyebrows are for. <laughs> Isn't that what eyelashes are for? What That's are what I? everything's for. Yeah, I think they're all hair. for protecting your eyes. Eyelashes, yeah, like dirt, debris. If you squint, do the old safety squint. 
I feel like they don't do a good job. I feel like they should start doing better, you know? They don't do a good job against blocking, like, shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. It's happened so much. Like, it's happened three times in a row since I've shaved my head that I get... I never used to get shampoo in my eyes, but I'm always expecting... Why are you using my... shampoo? You have no hair. You still gotta keep the little... There's a little hair. They gotta you keep it clean. I'm not a soap. fucking animal. You gotta make you your scalp soap. clean and everything. <laughs> I'm not just like, ah, I'm not, yeah. No, it's your toothbrush as you're going. Yeah. <laughs> Call him just with that fight. And it, I, I would love to talk to somebody. I'd love to sit them down. Maybe I'll do this with my daughter one day and get her to watch this movie and not tell her anything. Because up until this point, it's very stylized and it's like very, you know, like fun and you know, like quirky a little bit. And like we talk about comic booky, <laughs> but like there's no like you don't know it's going to get like <laughs> super oh, yeah. crazy right now. And it's not even the fact that like, because when he's coming, you would usually think that, okay, this is the moment where our main character doesn't know what's going on. And he's going to have to learn. But he just jumps right into he's exactly. fighting, he's kicking his ass. So well, And in a second here, when he starts singing, like... You're either in or out at that point oh, <laughs> for yeah. this movie, I think. And that's where I think I think it's definitely ahead of its time because I remember it, did, it was kind of like Spider Verse where it didn't do the greatest box office wise. I think it was just one of those like I don't think people were ready for something like this in live action yet because I also think it's very especially at times when we get to Brandon Ross character, it's very anime ish, and I feel like anime is just like finally in the past like honestly i feel like since we started the podcast like i know it's because i'm with kirkland and jessica now but i feel like it's becoming a bit more mainstream or we see them like we see north american people adapting anime a lot more it's not great but we at least yeah. see or like at like uh, these past years like attack on titan like blew up and got really popular where i feel like at this point anime in like north american culture was still very like you know niche and you know d- didn't have a huge it had a huge audience but not mainstream yet so I think it partly does depend, though, as well on, like, what you're a part of. Because for mm-hmm. me, like, you get all this news about the MCU and uh, the DCU and everything like that. And uh, for me, my timeline, you know, my social media is not quite as filled with that, where I do follow, like, Funimation and Crunchyroll. And so for me, I do see a lot more of that being kind of mainstream. Um, see, the, the, the only counter I'd have is, like, with Marvel and DC, it's like I can show you, like, a, like a terrible comic book movie that has all four reviews but then stills made like 800 million dollars or something or like anime or like video game movies those would be bad and then like no one would go see them like they're very like minor and that's where it's just like the even sonic which is like the biggest video game movie of all time it's not even that big of a hit really and it's one of those where it's still like i'm trying to think of what i don't even know what north american anime is i know like i think a lot of people watched uh death note on netflix but that was not great for the <laughs> north american people right well, I think too, since Netflix is starting, like they've gotten mm-hmm. into creating their own animes now. Oh yeah. Uh, what is it like? Seven Deadly Sins and stuff like that. I love Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah, so that's like a Netflix anime as opposed to like a traditional Japanese translation. So I think that does help to create that culture being a little more accepted because yeah, it's more, more readily accessible. available. Yeah. Is seven a big thing, Hansi? If it's anything like semi anime related and then seven, you're in. You know, seven deadly X's here, seven deadly sins. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this movie, yeah, really became a cult classic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember this. To be fair. <laughs> the demon hipster chicks. <laughs> well, before this, too, like, it's somewhat realistic and then all of a sudden it's just like what mm-hmm. the hell just happened yeah because if you the like it's it's definitely not the same baby driver but baby driver has that where it's stylized like the guys like dancing the streets timing and stuff so it's like it's stylized but it's still in real life and that this had that for a while where all the stuff on the outside like the ring and the edit transitions were stuff that they weren't creating which is the side but then yeah right. it's kind of like you were talking about the second he sings you're into it and you know it's just it, just every and like I literally feel like this scene you're in or out. You know if you you know what you're in for. And if you watch, you go not for me. Then it's best not because it just gets even right. crazier as it goes for like the next hour. It's so and funny like, too. Oh Sorry. no, go ahead. I was just gonna say like the first time I watched this on Netflix, I feel like I was watching the movie and then I was phasing out like at this point, <laughs> like probably when you started singing or maybe before that when they're battling. I was just like I don't know what I was getting into, but this this isn't what I was thinking. <laughs> I have a question for yeah. Hansi before we get too far away from it. So yeah. technically, wouldn't is there a reason why 
he has to defeat everyone else like did everyone have to defeat the like five evil exes before and if so how come like this guy just burst into coins like if someone else defeated him earlier shouldn't he have already died and burst right. into coins um it's been a few years since i read them honestly uh I think they did have to battle. Um, the her main ex Gideon was also a lot more involved in the whole story <laughs> in the book. Yeah. So in the movie, um, he's pretty just kind of not tacked on the end, but you you don't even get a hint of him. Really. Yeah. Like you hear the name, but that's about it. So it's they refer to him a lot out of out of all the exes, like he's the main one. Well, I think kind of, I'm not sure if it's the same in the books, but they kind of insinuate that he's the one that put the group together, right? Like, it was kind of his idea, which I don't know how... Yeah. Like, how do they, do they kind of feel that he is the best ex for her? Or is it like, because I, I still wonder, like, what are they... He's like the most evil one. <laughs> <laughs> he's, I don't know, it was just like trying to control her and stuff, but because he puts that, like, whatever chip on in her neck. So- so I realized one thing because I like I said, hadn't seen this in a while and I watched it before just to get ready for the stream. When we did our 24 hour charity stream, I remember us getting into a friends versus Seinfeld debate. And I remember when he walked in the room there, there was a Seinfeld that's music. Seinfeld and I was like, theme, yep. that's why Hansi likes this. Cause I was just like, it's Pilgrim's <laughs> the same as the Seinfeld characters. It's different because Pilgrim gets an arc eventually, but they're like unlikable little pricks that are really funny and stuff like that. Wow. And that's where I was like, they're that they are all the Seinfeld people are fucking assholes. They treat people like trash and everything like that. But it's like they get these self in the situations and everything. And they're like, the, don't you see a correlation between Scott could fit right in the Seinfeld people? Like he'd be sitting in the diner complaining about the situation. Be like, oh yeah, you're totally right. You know, it was just so funny they used that beat. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some sitcom vibes. <laughs> oh yeah, I, so I, I, I can see what you're saying. I forgot to say when we were talking in the middle of the fight, I love when she looks over and Kendrick looks over the boyfriend. She's like, not again. And she like pulls him away. (laughs) Is that not the same shirt that what's that asshole's name in Toy Story? Sid. 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 Is that not Sid's shirt? I think it is. Black with the skull. Spike. Is Spike a thing anymore still? I think it is. I think it is. Wow. That was such an early 2000s, like, such a men's yeah. channel. Bro channel. <laughs> yeah. Watch race cars, Thousand Ways to Die. And then, like, oh, yeah. Girls Gone Wild like at 3 a.m. And it's yeah. like, remember that when cable used to just have Girls Gone Wild, like, yeah, 4 or 5 a.m.? Oh, yeah. It's not a thing anymore, but it was just, I remember, like, sleepovers when you're, like, becoming of age, like, oh, and then when we get to that point, there's going to be this stuff on. And, like, I never liked watching it with people. It was I don't oh, it was awkward. Especially it like, was there'd be movies awkward. on that channel. I'm watching it with my dad and my grandpa. The next thing yeah. you know, Girls Gone Wild comes on. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Not gonna lie, I used to love watching Thousand Ways to Die. I was wondering where that was gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So... <laughs> well, I said I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know which way it was going because we had talked about Girls Gone Wild, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I used to love." And then Thousand Ways that Thousand Ways that was great. I used to say, my mom would always come in like two in the morning, and I'm sitting there, she, like she's like, "Go the fuck to bed," and I'm just like sitting there, wide eyed, watching Thousand Ways to Die. I'm like twelve. There's there's some like deaths on there that really stuck with me. That like I like be interacting with an object that I've like seen someone die on that. Like on that show, and I'm like, man, I I could be on that show <laughs> if I'm not careful. I've learned some of those, some of those deaths that really stick with you. I mean, we grew up watching Jackass as a generation, though. Like, I feel like our view of death is a little skewed. I've yeah. actually never seen a full Jackass movie. I was not in a bunch of that stuff. That, uh, Trailer Park Boy, South Park, like that. I kind of put them all together and they were never, not that I don't think they're bad. I just, know I could watch a few, like, I'm good. I don't need to continue. You probably think Trailer Park Boys is bad. I did when I was younger. And then when I watched it again, I'm like, oh, I can see the merit in it, but I just don't like, it's kind of, I don't know. I just, again, couldn't really invest in too many characters. And that's kind of what I'm about. But I get why, I get why people liked it. I never watched it. It was like, oh, why is this a hit? It's like, oh, this makes sense. I, I understand the demographic and stuff. Great Canadian TV show. Halif- I think they're in Halifax. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of it. Taylor was. Taylor, turn your mic on. Join the conversation. 
He's gone. I forgot he's even in here. Um, yeah, I think he's having tech issues. Oh, yeah, you're super choppy. Definitely some tech issues. Yeah. Shouldn't have pointed the spotlight at him. I apologize. <laughs> Taylor, the back in the yours. shadows to you. Yeah. <laughs> Explain us <laughs> the entire movie. So. so, one of the first times I watched this, I thought their band was super not good. And I still continue to think that their band is not that great. And I oh, hope I'm not I the only it. one. Beck did all the music for Sex bob Really? Yeah. And okay, that uh, explains why I like it. <laughs> yeah, Metric is the Clash at Demon Head. And then there's another band that did the Crash and the Boys songs. I love, I love their music. I think the soundtrack on this movie is 100% spot on. I just I don't like sex bob music. I yeah. don't mind like the other music. I just their style is not for me. Oh, switching to blue. There we go. I know you're gonna yep. say it's more like purple, but that, that's what they say is blue. So it's the best I got. I okay. discovered Beck on uh, Grey's Anatomy. Actually, oh shit, Taylor's just gone. He literally was on there, and then he just like <laughs> he just disappeared. He's like, yeah, Grey's Anatomy. It's funny how I discovered Beck. I can't remember what song it was. The music video, they used puppets in it. I can't remember what song, but uh, yeah, that's how I discovered them. I was like, I really like the song. I went to like, it's like graysanatomysongs.com or something because there's so many, there's so much music in the early 2000s that I found because of Grey's Anatomy. And uh, Beck was one of them. And yeah, they're, they're good shit. Yeah. That's quite some hair Michael Sarah's going on. Second and a half base. <laughs> Second and a half base. Halves. That's like in mean, they do that in Mean <laughs> Girls too, where they're talking about virginity. And she's like, well, I'm half a virgin. And they're like, what do you mean? <laughs> like one of the most iconic lines coming up right here. Yeah. Bread makes me fat. <laughs> Love Bread it. Makes you fat. I really like her blue. Her blue on blue. It's good. Blue blue. She's so pretty. She's uh, Mr. McGregor now. What? Obi Wan. Remember Dream. we 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 discovered that before Birds of Prey. <laughs> Dream couple. My mind went to like Conor McGregor, so I had no idea what you were talking about, Travis. <laughs> yeah, she's with <laughs> UFC fighter, <laughs> returning in three weeks, Conor McGregor. Yeah, I didn't know how I felt about her little like danglies, but they're growing on me. I don't know what you'd call them. It's cute. I'm still in the middle. I'm still in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> I like all her outfits though in this movie. Those are prime, prime choices. <laughs> the hat is just so great. Yeah. <laughs> I think I could rock a hat like that. Oh, was what there? There was an X on a sign there. Was that yeah. another X? Yep. Yeah. What are we at now? Two. Is it like uh, one? Two or three. Oh, okay. Never mind them. So Kirkland, that... you're gonna get a hat with the earmuffs and everything like that. That's I think I could be... really rock that, honestly. Go for it. I do need a new toque. Tell me when you see Chris Evans, because I think I was a little ahead of you, so I paused it, and then when Chris Evans back, I'll be back with you. Well, Please. I think I, I was like way behind earlier because I started it and I got a normal Universal and then the pixelated one. Like, did you start with the pixelated one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So mine started with the regular one, and then I went forward a little bit. I think I'm pretty close. Uh, here's Chris Evans. Uh, I just said, oh, he's walking out of the trailer right Chris, now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I went song. to turn the volume up earlier, and I hit pause accidentally. But it was a scene where the screen was black, so I was sitting there like, oh, this is weird. Like, there, it was the scene when they were <laughs> making out at the bed, and I was like, okay, the lights are still on, and then I'm like, I don't hear anything like for 20 seconds now, and I'm like, okay, I've clearly fell behind. 
I love that when he calls action for the directors. <laughs> so yeah. fucking good. <laughs> this, is what, people... uh, this is oh, what boy. it would have looked like if Chris Evans was Wolverine. Oh, yeah. Hey, there's still time. No, I know lots of people during quarantine were really wanting, like, there. I can't remember. There's some like Twitter trend. It was like movies you want of supporting characters, and everyone was like throwing this one out quite a bit for just seeing Chris Evans reprised as somehow. That would be cool. Oh yeah, especially now with his image as Captain America, because Knives Out he got to do that a little bit, but that was like a fun like. Well, I guess this is still fun, but that was like a di- that was different. still based in reality. Yeah, it was different. Where this would just be so outlandish and. <laughs> Scott, he lags. Uh, and then Love there's how he a just, like, appeared. Like, the gay friend is just out of nowhere. Just, oh, I'm here now. Yeah. Did you see on his car there's a two? He's the second yeah. X. But yeah, it's very, very fun. Well, Man, there's the... a three on that car. So what's the... that got to do, Travis? There was a three on the car? Yeah. Oh no, it's a two. Never mind. <laughs> just, just me on crack. <laughs> you should get off that. It's not good. <laughs> and I love it. This feels like, and I love they do this throughout the movie. But this just feels like every classic Mortal Kombat, like Tech and Street Fighter. Fighter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that whole like, this is so and so. This is so and so. And then like, their like their little stats and everything like that just. <laughs> Very, very well done and very fun. And that's where you can always tell, like, obviously there's writers on this as well and stuff like that, but you can tell the main people, especially Edgar Wright, is, like, a true fan of this type of stuff because sometimes you get people that write it, but then the person directing has no idea. And it can still work, but then when you have someone that knows those little details, like, well, in a game it would go like this or it would act like this, you know? So right. that that that's the fun thing about this. It's just, like, those little details every time. Are so good. Oh, there's so many fucking skateboards. Yeah, it's... <laughs> totally packed with Nintendo mm-hmm. homages and Easter eggs and stuff. It's great. It is Sid's shirt, by the way. I don't know if anyone ever answered that. Mm-hmm. Ad, but Thank you. <laughs> that was actually hilarious. <laughs> See, that's why I'm surprised that you guys weren't bigger fans of this because this movie is so you know, nerdy and geeky that it's yeah. just so much fun to watch and every time you watch it, there's always you know, Something these little else. things you pick up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah, really enjoying it this go around for yeah. sure. Like I said, I think uh, these parts I always liked. I think I think for me it was always Scott as a character. I could never, I still have a hard time getting into him and like investing in his type of journey till towards the near end. But once he kind of kind of <laughs> turns around, it's the <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it's kind of like really the near end, but. Uh... Thwomp. <laughs> Can you read my email? <laughs> Just such a typical, like, you know, cocky white boy full of himself. <laughs> on that rail a grindy thingy oh Taylor's back in a different room oh shh okay Yeah, the eyes back and forth, like that's the little details are so good. I just love that the one liner too, like big fan. Yeah, why wouldn't you be? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh so like Edgar Wright has sometimes been compared to Tarantino in that sense as far as the dialogue. It's very crisp. It's always just like mild in it, very wordy. 
Yeah, Edgar Wright sent this movie to Quentin Tarantino to like critique while he was making it. Oh, Give him a few pointers and stuff. Yeah. Do you know any of like the comments that or like critiques that he gave back to him? Um, I know that he said at the beginning to have a scene before that opening credits song because it's introducing so many characters. To have that scene at the beginning to introduce like the main ones, then get into the rest of them after that credits thing. I know he said that, but that's all I know. Interesting. He's like, you gotta yeah. fight for that f bomb, man. You gotta fight for yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Don't let him take it. No, I'm very interested to see what happens with Tarantino because he's saying like his next one is his last one. I'm always interested to see if he's gonna do that where he's still going to write and give it to other people or if he's going to do TV shows or series and whatnot because I still feel like or if you need just that just producing maybe because there's lots of directors that have those stories of like they gave their script like Smith has done that like they say hey can you take a look at this because everyone just respects them so much in that sense mm-hmm. I have another question for you Hansi yes when this movie first came out was there any type of like recording or anything that happened if you phoned that number uh, I've never thought about that. Maybe, honestly. It, well, isn't it a five 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 number? It's it's a no. It's a two one six, wasn't it? Oh. It said. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I've never thought about that. That would be yeah. hilarious, though. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what it says. This is pretty large, then. The hell. I didn't know she's in this. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. This was yeah. my first oh, time it's, seeing it's Brie Larson two, one, before two. I even knew who she yeah. was. Because I kind of forgot about that till I started this up the other day. But Yeah, she's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think the first thing I saw her in... <laughs> Do you see Taylor there? No, I, he's lovely. He, like, popped right into the room like this. And then he and then he exited. So he's yeah. There he is. <laughs> Taylor, in another word, could play the Chris Evans character. You know, he just has to buckle a little bit more. But okay, same thing. What a career she's had now. Oscar winner, biggest like one of the biggest Marvel movies it's of all time. It's just yeah. I think the first thing I saw was or recognized like her being in was Twenty One Jump Street. As soon as you yeah, she's that, always in a bunch of stuff that I forget about. Yeah, but you know, um, also has the power to just make so many man so, boys yeah. just mad like, at the drop yeah. of the line. Yeah, One, two, three. Three. It's power. <laughs> it's, it's a great <laughs> power. testing. <laughs> yeah. What? I'm gonna click it down. And count to three. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. So One. I looked it up. Just- <laughs> Because I was wondering, um, the phone number, it's uh, a New York area code, and it's been used in a bunch of other things, such as, like, definitely, oh. maybe, and right. it's a real phone number, and it was acquired by Universal Studios to avoid Start the 555 screaming. fake uh, prefix. That's interesting. Also, I will shout okay. out that I love that they did a girl as one of the exes. Oh, hell yeah. I love it, too. I wonder in 2010 if the studio was like ever gave pushback on that, you know, like of like, ah, oh, is that you know that we want to market this to young boys and blah blah. And I know people might say, oh, that's it, but I just even like I know people even go like, oh, 2010, that's not too bad. It's like it's like the way studios think and like how like curmudgeon they are. It is it is impressive to see that they got that in there because she like that's a full on from the book, right? She's one of the exes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and sexuality has changed a lot in 10 years. Like, you yes. might say 10, 2010, oh, that's not that bad. But, like, 10 years is a long time for it's change. It's a long time. 10 years ago, like, gay marriage wasn't legal in a bunch of places. You know, like, that's where it's like when people say it wasn't that bad. It's like, no, like, it was like, it was like Obama was just getting around that. You know, like, that's the thing where it's just. Oh, uh, yeah. No, like I said, I never thought I would have liked Aubrey Plaza as much as I have over these years, but. That's the F word that they had to uh, bleep. Uh... <laughs> All of those. 
Yes, I do he, love I, that he comments on it. What do you? What's yeah. wrong with your mouth? Yeah. And people have always kind of speculated that this would be possibly the Deadpool route they do if he goes in the MCU, right? Like people have kind of Which used this crazy. or other things as like example as far as he swears, but then other characters or himself make note of it. And I think that is probably the best route to do. Yeah. Is she wearing a G4 shirt? I thought so, yeah. Uh, the awkward stages of early dating. Some of the best and worst times. What's our time at? My movie just broke. Oh, I'm at... I'm around f- going on 57 minutes in. That's where I am at. I'm 57.27, but I'm also 50, longer. 55.27? <laughs> These times are not going to help you at all. Somewhere in the 55 to 58 time range. Right now on my screen, Brie Larson is having a conversation with Michael Sarah, and yeah. she's rocking a badass jacket. She says, you're jealous, I'm allowed. Yeah, that's where I'm at. With a big wig, too. <laughs> with bangs is she again. walking out right now? No, no she's still talking. Yeah. And pause for a second. Let me know when she's walking out. Kirkland, she's walking out for you. I have the infinite Still sadness talking. on my screen. I'll play it when you guys get there. Still talking. She's walking out. Okay. For Bleep Pilgrim, the infinite sadness now. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Which is the name of one of the books. The oh, third that's book. cool. Mm. Did it's they do that G4 with all shirt. the titles? Did uh, they do like an intro thing like that? Uh, I don't. Well, maybe. I don't think so. But maybe. Did I miss anything exciting in that conversation that I completely missed because my <laughs> uh, the answer to life how and to raise was, children. I was talking to Scott about Ramona. She had badass earrings. Yep. I don't know if anyone caught badass that. Badass coat, everything yeah. like that. There's a lot of guys in that bed. <laughs> he's killing it in the game right now. These guys, yeah. every he's bringing a guy home like every. He just brought home two. Like no and other Scott. No, the other Scott was there in the beginning. Okay. Yeah, Still, but the, they're, they're the other dead. guy is the friend from. Yeah. Stacey. Boyfriend. Yeah. yeah, Stacy's boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, the Clash at Demon Head is the name of a Nintendo video game, like from way back in the day. Hmm. Mm. All our shows are secret show. That's how I feel sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Before COVID, when you guys were doing shows, did you guys have, like, what kind of places were you playing? Like, what kind of turnout were you getting? Um, <laughs> that knives chow in the window. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mainly, uh, mainly bars. Um, but there's a couple cool music venues around here, like in Salt Lake City and stuff, that we've played out a few times. Um, but mainly bars here in Ogden where I'm where I live. So how do you yeah, know all your members? Like, how did you did you know them from like school or did you guys yeah, meet throughout I'm, life? Um, so there's me, my best friend, Winter. Yes, Summer and Winter. Those are our real names. That's fucking bad. I met bad her in high school. That's destiny right there. Um, we met our sophomore years and just have been best friends ever since. And then Chase, the drummer, is Winter's brother. And he's been in a few bands and has been playing music forever. And so we're like, hey, come be in our band. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been great. But sometimes we have secret shows where no one comes. Oh, yeah. sometimes, we have, sometimes we get, you know, 10 or 12 of our friends plus the bar crowd. So that's nice. That's awesome. I like your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Pilgrim looks just so bored playing. <laughs> do you have any friends like those guys that like show? Because like comedian people say that like, when they're trying to stand up comedian, they'll always have a friend too that shows up as like the laugh track guy. Of, like oh, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there's a couple that, couple people for sure that come just to cheer really loud. It's nice to have those people yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Hey, Ramona. 
See, this is when they start making her the obsessive, like she has a uh, a big problem with the breakup or the new relationship. <laughs> oh, that's something, like obviously this is not just in high school, but like these dynamics, like the I don't miss that of high school dating or the AK retail dating as well. It's just like everybody knows everybody. Somebody when they break up is gonna be somebody else. It's always gonna be awkward. It's always gonna be like a different. Oh, I just like <laughs> fuck. I just yeah PTSD. <laughs> Those are some big stiletto heels. Oh, this song is so good. Yeah, this was um, written by Metric, and then Brie Larson sang it for the movie. I remember when this movie came out, this, for some reason, kind of blew up. Like, this song, I remember yeah. seeing around, like, everywhere. Maybe because, like, you're saying uh, who it was written by. But I just remember, I hadn't even seen it, but I had seen it just kind of, like, everywhere. Like, a Facebook and people talking about it. And I feel like this is how, like, maybe my introduction to her before anything else. Because, like, I forget, I always forget she's in 21 Jump Street. I never, mm-hmm. I never remember that at all. Yeah. And then I was just a fan of more of the stuff she's done later on. Like, Room, Fantastic, the one she won the Oscar for. That's really what got her on my like big list but yeah yeah she just i think it blew up because she just looks so hot <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> while she's singing this and the song's really good mm-hmm. <laughs> now i i will say that the first time i saw this i thought they were both going to be the exes obviously i was wrong and brie larson just shoots ramona looks just because it's just like you're the new girl but yeah. for when i saw it the first time i thought oh there had something gone on there too as well, but hashtag Travis was wrong. We've got the three on the shirt there too and everything, of course. So Taylor, you are muted, but whenever you're, if you're back to He life, looks so distraught. He yeah, like, he, lo- he looks like he's just been like on a fucking chase. <laughs> he's still on minute 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to start the movie, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he's chuckling he can definitely hear us and now he had the reverse too because he realized he had like a punisher type shirt on and that was all like black with the white outlines but now yeah. it's like a white shirt with the black outline so and i just realized this the other day like all, like look at aubrey plaza and realize this is not a shot against them all it's just like everyone's so young in this movie just because it was 10 years ago like when I, like they're all like they look like babies now compared yeah. to, like now they look like adults but everyone looks so young in this movie michael sarah never ages he just looks the fucking same like he's gonna look the same till he's like 60 like he's still like but like, everybody else is just like they look so young it's crazy to see yeah but it's one of those movies that like ages better with time as far as just the casting because like if we talk about it, it's just like it's such an ensemble of people that became such a big deal. We're like right now I'm watching Lord of the Rings and like all of them are known actors, but like <laughs> all of them are like that's their like known role for the most part. Like other than Ian McKellen, Orlando Bloom has Pirates, but all of them are going to be like just known for that where a lot of these people were like went on to become much more. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, that scene, that was epic. <laughs> did you forget about that one? I, I definitely right did. <laughs> he really doesn't. It's like I'm not afraid to hit a girl. I'm a rock star. You cock. Yeah, there's the cocky cock. That was better to keep in there for sure. I wonder how much this affected the whole like vegan phenomenon. <laughs> you know, in the, um, in the books, there's a recipe for a ve- there's a vegan recipe like in the books. Nice, yeah. <laughs> well, this is what I said earlier with the food. As far as like ten years ago, yes, I had heard of, heard of veganism, and I knew. I don't know, maybe one or two people, but I feel like it wasn't like nowadays, especially past few years, it's like memed upon all the time. Like people always talk about how they brag about stuff like that. That was, I don't think the case 10 years ago. And that's where like the books are like, cause if it comes from the books, very ahead of its time that way, as far as now, I think it's a very common joke to crack, but making this is kind of like a, a fun type of segment. Really well done. Mm-hmm. A mad Taylor's not here. I have eggnog cupcakes right now. I was waiting to like oh, eat them nice. in front of him, but yeah, but Jealous. no. 
There was some threes written in that alley as well, if anyone yeah, noticed. Saw that on the trash cans. Oh no, yeah. he has a cord in his mouth. That's not good. <laughs> I, I feel like this guy has been in something else or Superman. He was Superman. I think like, she probably known him for something else, but yeah, yeah he was a Superman. Superman. <laughs> in like, like the, the lowest OG Superman, Superman I've never watched. No, no, no. He's like in a he's in the mid tier. He was before Cavill. Mm-hmm. What yeah, was that movie called? Superman Returns. Oh, for some reason I didn't think it was called Superman. I thought it was another like Man in Steel t- title. No, they did this thing where they decided you can debate if it's a good idea or not, but he was still playing the Christopher Reeve Superman just in a new movie in that world and Ah no, it's we'll retro it one day. It's an interesting movie. It's very slow. It's not, I think, what people were expecting. It's very. Is that I the one know, at the end? He like has a son or something. No, that's the whole plot. Like apparently, Lois Lane is pregnant, and he decides, well, this is a time for me to leave, which is not really a great <laughs> Superman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not not what I envision my Superman doing is find out he's a son. Like, all right, I'm out. I gotta go save some planets now. So. <laughs> I like how How's it going, everyone? By the way, is zero, Ooh. as in he's not an evil ex. It's going all right. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good movie, isn't it? It's great. <laughs> it's Madison just watching it out there without you, and you're just pretending. <laughs> no, I cut her off a long time ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's waiting to get back inside the house. <laughs> 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 It's cold out here in Kelowna. <laughs> you stink like shit. Did you just poop? <laughs> I think I've somewhat salvaged this uh, what went wrong. But I, I, Hansi, I do want to sincerely apologize because <laughs> I feel like I've really dropped the ball. Well, not dropped the ball. Like the tech technology has risen up against me over here. Well, I feel like. Yeah, what happened over there? Because everyone else was been fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That sucks. No, it was the Mac, Taylor. I'm telling for. you. You know, <laughs> I, I love Apple products, but at the end of the day, <laughs> oh, Windows can really. They fuck yeah. you up big time. <laughs> That's awesome. You can tell Taylor about your cupcake now. Eggnog cupcakes. Uh, did you make eggnog cupcakes? Uh, right with a hint of it, but it's the buttermilk icing that has the eggnog. So oh, so you can't get it in the stores. What? You can't get? Can you get that in store? Like, or is it only something you have to make? Is that eggnog icing? I just wanted to home make it. I'm making a turtle's chocolate cake tomorrow too. Mm. I'm yeah, gonna make one. an eggnog cupcake tomorrow now. Actually, that sounds Dude, like it's good. super good. All the cups around. Look at Michael Sarah's little guns there, going hard. Don't and Hansi, when did you when did you start? Yeah, Kirkland, are your guns bigger than him's? They're Sarah's? more defined. I'll go okay, <laughs> good. They're more toned. Hansi, what yeah. do you think was like the initial like for you starting to like obviously like music but when you decided you want to actually do it? Was it like school? Was it something? What made you go like, hey, I actually want to start doing this, opposed to just watching people do it? Yeah, I well, I've always been a performer like starting elementary school I was in like choirs and musical theater um and then I started taking piano lessons in junior high and then I switched to dance and then all throughout high school I did choir and musical theater um and then my senior year is when I started the band Mm. um so I've always been playing, always been making up songs for as long as I can remember, honestly. So, yeah, always loved it. Mm-hmm. Thomas Jane, he was just in our Marvel poll there, Taylor. One of the uh, Punisher fellows, right? Yeah, there's been three of them now. Three, No, yeah. four. There's been four, sorry. Four, wow. yeah, with the TV show. Yeah. And how are your, also, I'm not, I, I doubt your parents were like, you can't play band or anything, but how were they in, like, the situation? Like, have they been your shows? And is it one of these things where it's like, 
they actually like because I can tell my parents have like check like I think my dad has listened to a few. My mom like listens. Oh yeah, like I like that thing you do. But I can, like oh you you've like listened to a little bit and that's about it, yeah. which is fine. I'm not expecting her to listen to me an hour review of like why I think Man of Steel is this way. But like, <laughs> how are they with your band? Yeah, they they listen casually. It's mm-hmm. not like they know the songs. Um, they come they love to you, so like yeah. Yeah, they come to our shows sometimes, but yeah, yeah, they're <laughs> they're Classic fine. Yeah. I feel like Winter and Chase's parents or mom um, is really really supportive, so it's it's good to have her around. But my parents are just whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you still have like a, I guess, part time job at this point? Like, yeah, it's I... not paying the bills or not by any means especially now we haven't we didn't play a show in 2020 just because it wasn't really possible so um yeah i still work full-time um cheers maybe one day (laughs) (laughs) us too yeah I don't. I think I asked this before. Are you guys on TikTok? Because I know they have been pretty good for like blowing up musicians. Yeah, we really should. Like, I'm. We're working on a recording project right now, putting out more music, and so I think when that's out, is when we'll ramp up the videos and everything on all the platforms. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I want a corduroy jacket so bad. Look how cool that guy looks. Corduroy. Let me see it. I have a corduroy hat. I just need to get a matching jacket. Maybe that's too much. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, but I don't. Mm, I have to see you in Kirkland. I'd have to see you like model and everything. It's a different I'll model look. for you. Yeah, you should get that and that hat from earlier with the earmuffs, and then you got a there real full go. and a scarf, probably. I want to get in the scarf game. I'm, I'm thinking it's, next it's year tough. I'm going to get in the scarf game. I want to get that, and I got want to get an overcoat too. I want to get a few of those. So, oh yeah, Shay's mom but, got me like a like a face wrap. It, I, like it could act as a like a face mask if you need to, I guess. But like <laughs> it's also just like a neck warmer, like a neckerchief. It's actually nice. so nice. It keeps you really warm. Nice, Travis. I feel like you're just striving to build to the. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why it does that. <laughs> <laughs> how's, how's this? Is that better? It's better. Now. It's just that startup. You just sound You're like you're having a fucking. I don't know why it's so loud. It's when and I like definitely when they're like, "Why are you going deaf at the age of 50 Travis? Go, oh, well, Taylor Field who used to turn on his fucking mic and he did hello, and then like. How's this? <laughs> so that's why like I can't hear you, grandchild. Like no, no, you didn't. Have, it was just when you start talking, just just do the like the build up. Whisper. I whisper in first because you've had. I'm guessing you've been turning your mic on and off, right? Affirmative. Yeah, so when you turn it on, it gives that like initial like jolt of energy. So that's why I think if you're turning on right when you talk, it's just like it's like <laughs> I'm not gonna say that live on air. We should trade. <laughs> we should give Taylor this mic that doesn't turn on and off, and then he can't do it. It's lots of stimulation to something and not stopping. That's oh. what you're doing to the microphone when you turn it on and talk at the same time. I gotcha. I was gonna say initially. You're going for the scarf and the coat overlook. Are you going for like that Arnold Schwarzenegger? Sch- Schneger, Arnold, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger? Schwarz- 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 That's what yes. you think of when you think of scarf and oh, no, I see what you mean, jingle, jingle all the way. Yeah. I'm going for like yeah, like like oh, hoity-toity guy. I like that. I love the Bruce Wayne look. I have so much clothes. I haven't been buying them this year, but I have so many like dress shirts and stuff and polos. I love that look. The problem is I don't have the budget in my life to afford. You know, oh look at this nice lavender <laughs> jacket that makes you look great. It's like oh look, here's this thirty dollar one that already has a hole in it. Here we go. So that's why it's like I've made myself uh, a thing with my new career though. I'm gonna buy myself a tailored suit once a year. So it's starting nice. this year. So nice. So when you live to be 100, you're going to have like over 100 of them. Nope. Not if I'm starting now. If I live to 100 and... 128. Yeah, you'll hit that no problem. You eat healthy. Yeah, I just I just sculpted down five eggnog cupcakes. So I don't know how we're doing on that. <laughs> May Whitman. She's a very underrated talent, which I wish got really big. I can't remember where I saw her. Oh, so funny her. enough, first time I saw her was Grey's Anatomy. She played this girl oh, the spine but then was in parenthood the tv show reboot which i really liked i really loved parenthood mm-hmm. do you remember who her 
uh, like boyfriend in season two was, who's extremely popular now. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Michael oh. B. Jordan. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I even remember I like, him. yeah, I'm not even trying to be a trash told you. So I remember like telling my mom, like, this guy's going to be a star. Cause in that show, he played like a recovering addict, but he was only like the yeah. age of 16 or 17. And man, was he good. He was like, everyone's good in the show, but you could just tell like, Oh, this guy's like just better than everyone else. And I think that's why he was off the show so quick because like he just started oh, getting yeah, booked, booked for sure. Yeah. And then he got in Chronicle and that was it. But this is like this fight reminded me of when we watched uh, like Dragon Brawl Broly Kirkland. Like this fight, oh, and yeah. that, the last fight we just had, like obviously because he looked like a Saiyan mode and stuff. But these two fights back to back were like very anime plus the kind of final fight to me reminds me of that. But this is very like. The quick dialogue they have with each yeah, other, girls, no, like totally. the, the insults and everything. Yeah. I love, I love this beat coming up here with Scott and like the shield thing, like the Buzz Lightyear moment. Really fun. <laughs> and just the choreography of this whole yeah, fight. great so choreography. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, I love when Ramona has her hammer. Oh yeah, I love the setting too, like the lights in the background. It's really fun. I love for the little like she's just moving his hands like that, like getting right. Yeah. Just the little touches. She's somebody that to me is still not popular enough as she should be. You know, like she's just Mary Elizabeth uh, Winstead. Yeah, very underrated. 100%. Yeah, I was really hoping like Birds of Prey was gonna be one of those big moments for him. The movie never like blew up and. You know, I'm still waiting for it. And then, like, she was in 10 Cloverfield Lane. That that did really well, but... Yeah, I liked that one. Mm. I think that was Sky High. That's what really took off her career. Oh, God, Sky High. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that leg that she is kicking with right now, they used a fake leg for that shot because it had to be straight up. So if you see, like, behind-the-scenes pictures, that she's just standing there, and they have, like, a fake leg. That's funny. Fun fact number 50, whatever. Yeah, we need like a little <laughs> counter in the top corner. Do you guys want some more Saw fun facts? Give me sure. Saw fun facts. I don't have any yet. I'll, I'll think of some. No. I'll think of some. He doesn't have to Google them. You just, just got to think about up. it. He's got yeah. it. Let me get a dime to be quickly. Fun fact, I still haven't seen the Book of Saw, which was supposed to come out last year. There you go. Is that the Chris Rock one? Yep. One day. As I mean, Taylor time about all these movies, like, oh, this comes out, this comes out. I was just like, yeah, if it's HBO or Warner Brothers, I don't trust any of these release dates. I can't get excited for anything that's not streaming, you know, because it's just, I just don't want to get, I don't want to get excited for Black Widow. I don't want to get excited or at least intrigued for Morbius in March and then, you know, get that yeah, fateful two two yeah. weeks later, you know, email. Yeah. So Taylor, what have you thought of this movie so far? Of what you've seen, I have been paying attention. Like, it never learns. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't turn the mic off, so I don't even know why I did it. <laughs> but I have been listening, and I have been like watching this film as I've been like troubleshooting, and it's definitely a lot. Uh, I I don't want to say it was bad the first time I watched it because I enjoyed it, but <laughs> I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why I didn't watch it sooner, and I wish that I have. But I'm really enjoying it again. The special effects, the choreography, like you're saying, is really really awesome. It's just it's fun. It's quirky, and I think you are right. He probably is that same persona as the characters from Seinfeld, which is probably again why I'm more of like a Seinfeld kind of character because I don't find his character too. You are a Sein- Pro- Taylor Field <laughs> is a Seinfeld character for sure. I'm definitely for, and you're definitely. That. I love the shirt that he has. Like it's four and a half. Yeah. But it's very Fantastic Four. Like it's identical to the Marvel like OG logo Fantastic Four. See, but I'm kind of surprised that he's wearing a four because, I mean, he's not X number four or anything. Like I get the. I- I feel like it's just like he's four and a half, like he's in the middle, like he's about to go fight X5, right? So he's like in the middle of four and five. That's how I took it. Like he's four and a half. So he's on his way to the fifth one. Actually, no. (laughs) Actually, no. How many shirts does he go through in this movie, Hansi? That I don't know. Definitely a lot. Most of them do have some sort of reference or fun little Easter egg connected to them, though. 
Green hair, Ramona. Switch your color. How many colors are there total? In this movie, three. I think she changes her like six times in the books. Mm. Uh, Jason Schwartzman, the perfect douchebag in every movie and TV show. Like, have you talked about a guy that's been typecast? Man, that's been his role since like <laughs> sure. day one. Yeah. But he's so good at it. You know? He is so tough. good at it. Yeah. It's just like he's just that reliable. We need a douchey character. He's great in this, though. He's great in this and another movie I like him in where he's like has a smaller role as um funny people. He plays this like roommate that's like really six. Su- everyone's actors and comedians, and he's like having success and just mm-hmm. very well done. <laughs> These twins. <laughs> And just a little shout out. I love that line when Scott's like, I put my personal problems aside for the music. Like, get it together, man. Or obviously, because mm-hmm. throughout this whole movie, that has not been the case. But How could there possibly be a legit battle of the bands about two guys who use techno and remixes in an actual band? They're that good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just that good. All the Scott's guitar, like all like duct taped together and everything like that. Yeah, Yeah, their music definitely was hidden at the same time. Like when you talk about Beggars, it also has like that kind of RK Fire vibe and sort of that sort of. I can't. There's probably another one I'm thinking, Kings of Leon, a little bit and stuff like that. And that was like. That that's one thing that I'm surprised didn't get like more blow up too, as far as like the music was really starting to be in at that point, you know. Yeah, I feel like the soundtrack, like all the original songs for this movie, also have quite the cult following. Mm-hmm. I think it was just kind of like the staticky kind of bit of it. For me, that was, I think, what did it. Was it, I don't know, had it just kind of sounded yeah. crisp? Yeah, for sure. Has that that vibe. That's Gideon. <laughs> I don't look at what the budget is on this movie. Taylor, what do you think about the music in this movie? I like it. Like, I, I love this scene right now because I feel like this is like some Godzilla, King Kong versus Kinky Dora stuff <laughs> happening. <laughs> Very much. Is your TV where you watch this now down there? Is that why you're looking there? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> just, I always like to doing, stare yeah. at the floor. I'm just, <laughs> in sh- I'm ashamed of myself, so I'm just head down. <laughs> Put on that cone of shame. The dunce cap. Let's see, yeah, dunce <laughs> With cap. With your yeah. sandwich. <laughs> still got his sandwich. So. <laughs> the man was hungry before we started the cast, and he, he still never ate it. Eighty-five million. Yeah, this was time. almost about hundred million. That makes sense because it's a crisp-looking movie. Yeah. Yeah, all I think all the movies. special effects hold up pretty well. I think, and I think that's definitely for that budget because the cast. There's some names in there, but no one was asking like massive budgets for this one. As they far hadn't as their blown up yet. Yeah. Most of the people in this, yeah. Like the mo the first I was getting the biggest pay likely was Michael Sarah because it's super bad and Juno and all that stuff. Cause I actually feel like I'm trying to think of the first time I saw Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Obviously it's sky high for you, Taylor, so good for you. But I think this was the first time she got on my radar of just like being an actress, to be honest, because I don't know if there was anything else. Cause I still I think I've seen maybe one or two scenes of Sky High. Sorry, Taylor. One day we'll watch it. I know you're excited, but nothing that was on my radar to go check out this Disney superhero PG movie. But she was in, um, wasn't she in Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide? Oh I think she was. Yeah, she was the. Really? I wasn't oh, it. Was I was trying to think of what oh, she was now in. I'm, I'm now I'm up. scared that that's not right. Got the IMDb here. 
Because I really loved that show when I was younger. I did too. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So good. <laughs> That's how I started like macaroons and stuff like that. Was that fucking Coconut Kid? That episode where you like... I love them? Coconut Head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that pee thing, that was so great. When he's just like peeing in his pants. <laughs> I feel like uh, Gideon, everyone knows a Gideon. Oh, yeah. And I'm definitely yeah. not going to say it. There's definitely someone in a friend's group that we know from me first that has Gideon. I'm not going to say the names publicly, even privately, but there's just somebody because some of you might think he's You friendly. can say it to my face. It's not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> no, just every time there was, if there was parties, there'd be one person that'd show up. I just go, uh, Oh, brother, here we go, you know. Yeah. Totally can relate with that. Oh, yeah. And they never go away. It's never like, a, oh, I met that person once, and that's it. They're always like, every every time. <laughs> they just you know? appear. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. I think there was one time I was like an ex like this that the person had, but luckily they weren't around too much. So, but you don't want to. Look at his hair. Like, even though like, how, like, wavy they gave his hair and just like the way they parted. It's just. So good. Your hair was almost that long before the live uh, 24 hour stream. Trials. Yeah, but I never parted it like that. Exactly. Dude, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would have got you the glasses and everything. You could have uh, been a Gideon. It's definitely the glasses. Not saying that people wearing glasses are juicy, but it's the type of glasses they got him. They're just very business. Very like the whole look. Yeah. Yeah. It's all like a piece this... of gum, too. Yeah. The, the gum. He has the classic like and I've honestly i've rocked this before like the suit jacket but with a t-shirt it's a super douchey look but like i've definitely done it before it's just like yeah. you know it's, it's a good go-to but he's rocking that and like just the way he walks and jesus taylor have you ever been in that situation to slam your head against him yeah, just was. was i just have was. a few times <laughs> yeah exactly i think it happened there and i just missed it but um the line uh, like i'm in lesbians with you mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. Love that line, and I have said that so many times in just <laughs> my own life. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the most quoted from this movie for sure. I can't believe I said lesbians. You know, one thing that's weird, Wikipedia, I don't like with celebrities, they like, here's their autograph. It's like, I don't need that. It's just, it's weird. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but there you go. What if you're trying to like forward some autographs, you know, sell some <laughs> fake Brad Pitt photos. <laughs> Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> so, uh, San- Hansi, I'm sorry to break it to you, but I don't think she was in Ned's Classified School Survival Guide. Who was that, <laughs> Who was that not... girl in that show? I'll look it up. I was just looking at her television uh, uh, lifestyle or oh, like yeah. filmography and not in there, so... I picture the actress now. I don't know her name. It's Lindsay Shaw. Oh, she really looks like her, though. I'll give you that. That phone's not looking too good. I would love to use one of those old-fashioned phones again, like the old turn dial things. Those are classic. That's Lindsay Shaw. So yeah, she has she has a resemblance to her. Yeah. I, I tried to look on IMDb. It's weird. It's just her in like a cowboy outfit. It's a very strange <laughs> photo. So that I didn't use that one, but. <laughs> that was really good. So just a tip for any young girls out there that are listening to this. If there's a guy that's like petting your hair like that, <laughs> not good dude. Like Red it, flag. Yeah, if they're doing a joke, like if they're doing it like, oh look at like it's joking like cause of the swimming, yeah, that's fine. But if it's just like literally you're just sitting there. This guy doesn't have good intentions, and he's yeah, like Hansi said, that's a ma- that's a massive red flag. Red flag, yeah. What if a girl's doing it to a guy though, Travis? I think that's acceptable. Don't kink shame. There's acceptable <laughs> because like so, there's like stroking hair and there's a like, growing hair, but the way he was like literally like by one finger like picking up 
piece of hair and then like like that. that's like a, it's yeah. all about yeah. it's, it's it's like what people say it's not what you say it's how you say it. it's all about tone that same thing with that that was like it's all about how you pet the hair and that, it's not about some creepy pet. fucking how you pet, pet. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that that you don't want to mess with that hair petting maybe you just give it a little massage a little scalp a little scalp working that's well all the pens they're the best right now with the bald head. We missed it, but I liked those little beats of like, what's the password? I don't know. And they just let mm-hmm. me. Right. Yeah. And um, what's his face just said, their first album is so much better than their first album. <laughs> 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 There's a few lines like that in the background that are really funny. It's the classic, like, bad guy final staff, like, some yeah. good weapon on, on the side. At the top of a pyramid. That is <laughs> so awesome. That's so baller. I cannot be with you. And I think one thing that this movie is big for, as far as just, like, I think why it has such a big following is because... Michael Sarah is the lead and we get all these action scenes and it's not like a jacked up dude. It's not like the typical, like, a, like, oh, we talk about Batman, like a Bruce Wayne type or like the, the heart throb. Like even when we got to the very first scene and he just starts kicking ass and doing all these moves, that's still not something I think that's something that's getting a bit more normalized now. But even I still think 2010, it's like the Michael Sarah types had a certain role in movies. And I think that's one thing where it got like a big falling because of that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I do just think his awkward character is just like so if you think about this 10 years ago right say 17 18 16 for all of us like that awkward kind of feeling is just so relatable to a teenager oh yeah for sure I mean no not at all not at all oh yeah yeah you, you were born in 2000 so I mean you were only 10 <laughs> yeah <laughs> no we don't have awkward stages the the, the uh what are what are they called the, from what is the next is it gen x or what is this no you're gen z or Gen Z is that no, what it's called? You're a millennial. Nope. Yeah, we're millennials. You don't know your own generation, Travis. You're not I thought I was Gen Z. No, I'm too cool. Oh, for unless that. you're going with the 2000 birth year. Yeah, that's what I was going. With. Yeah, we're too gotcha. cool for that, Jessica. We don't have time to look after what our age groups are. We're too busy having a good time, you know. <laughs> going to fucking raves on New Year's Eve while COVID's a massive thing. Yeah, we fucking love it. No Gen Zer would watch this movie and then watch this movie again the next day because. They'd be too busy doing other it's all things. For the like cast, it's all for the cast, bro. It's all for the cast. It's for the cast, bro. I love the no, little I... human shapes and coins on the Yeah, camera. the coins are shaped like people. <laughs> it's such a nice touch. All the hearts. and There's just so many little touches in this kind of end battle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if they made Michael like that. They're like, it, it, does the books take place in Canada, Hansi? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like a lot of the Toronto like landmarks and stuff mm-hmm. are in it. The author is from Toronto. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know why the main villain. He just reminds me of Tom Cruise for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> the hair from like Mission Impossible Two or something. Yeah. Well, from, well yeah, from when he's he... playing that character from um, uh, Tropic Thunder. Oh I don't know why gosh. I'm getting advice from him. <laughs> Les Grossman. Yeah. That was him on that recording. <laughs> yeah, it was him. Yeah. I think this is like the Tom Cruise that like if people are like they always have those suspicions about him being like a, a real asshole. Like this is the Tom Cruise that's like. <laughs> Behind closed doors, you know, in public, he's 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 great. He always keeps a straight face. Check out our last after nine. We talked about if jumping on a couch was crazy or not, you know. Nice multiple set piece fight scenes going on here. Like the I I haven't done it because I love there was like a video I can't remember a couple of years ago with Taken Three with Liam Neeson. And that's also because he was older and it was like, look at the amount of edits in this fight scene. It was literally like him just trying to climb a fence. And it was because also he's an older gentleman. 
takes a little bit to do, but like this is like it's the like editing. 14 cuts. <laughs> yeah, and it's like literally just him going over a fence. Yeah. But like this is editing by design. It's really cool. I'd love to see a video or either do of just like how many cuts there are per second because that was like re- there was like a dozen in less than 15 seconds. Yeah. It was very impressive. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Such like a cool video game trope. Yeah, it looks like the and then I love what's coming up here, like, we're going to get it, but, like, it's, like, another classic video game thing of, like, when you've lost on a boss battle, and then you lose, and you come back, like, I know exactly what you're going to do, and there's yeah. all these things, and very well done. I feel like the newer Jumanji movies were inspired by this movie a little bit in the video game mm. aspects that they played with. I think that is the case where it's like you have somebody where they like it's def I, I agree with you, but you can see when it's done to somebody of I I could be wrong, but I don't feel like those directors have the same background as like Edgar Ray as far as like the skill and love for those things. Right. And that's where you can see they have like the base of like, oh yeah, this happens in video games and this this is a trope and stuff where this is like they do the tropes, but it like fits so you know, naturally the in the story. Too. Yeah, and it fits so naturally in the story where like Jumanji does lamp shading where they like usually call it out like it's a character like, hey, it's like this and hey, it's like this where this movie it's just like right. literally it's like a video game because like would know it. Yeah, yeah, that's the plot. Yeah, like even this just feels like very video gamey as far as like sometimes cut when you scene. die, or there's a, yeah, cutscene. You know, like the way the dimensions are, the ratio and stuff like that, the lighting, everything. I guarantee you. Well, I think he does because he he put Edgar Wright in Death Stranding, but Hideo Kojima was just like all over this movie. That makes sense. <laughs> I'm going to guess that's Taylor that we can hear. Yeah, we can hear. Taylor, I think we hear your movie. Your movie. (laughs) (laughs) Just that subtle head nod. He just fucking Ryan Gosling does in La La Land. Yeah. But we're not we're not saying we love you. We're like, hey, we hear something. We didn't hear it like the whole time before. It was just like the last like yeah. uh, five minutes it was popping up. Thank you for the warning. Yep. Subtitles, the podcaster's best friend. <laughs> yeah, Scott's finally learning his lesson. Yes. He's apologizing. Except for that poor guy at the door. He's like, your hair sucks. You know, yeah. like just, just gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> See, self-respect kids that there's 20, 22 the flaming sword the flaming sword oh there you Very go nice. he, he's only 22 i'm i'm older than that and i still haven't earned that <laughs> you'll get the sword one day but as he kids the power of self-respect yeah, means more than the power of love <laughs> you gotta love yourself before you can love others I do love how this is all the exact same, but they just sped it up because we've technically already been through it. All that Mm -hmm. same fight scene. Right. How's it going down there? (laughs) (laughs) Oh. That's a long scarf. You'll have to consider that when you go into your scarf phase. No, I'm a bit more of a thicker scarf guy. Like, I want, like, you know, a few layers and not so long. Like, maybe down to, like, shoulder length once the scarf is wrapped around, you know. Not sure what colors. I'm just just thinking about it. 
don't know if I'm ready to commit yet. I love this little moment they give Schwartzman, like, the super arcadey video game. Yeah. The katana stats. It's pretty up. One armed fighting. Total boss fight. Yeah. And, like, the pixels on the animation, too. Looks really cool. I'd love to see the, I'm not sure if you own this Hansi, but if you do, I'd love to see like the behind the scene features on some of these, like the fights and whatnot, like what they look like. Obviously there's lots added in, but just like there are times where they had to really like kind of, you know, probably start with prequel. I'm like, well, this is going to look like this and this is going to look like this. And you just kind of, I guess the good thing is they had the graphic novel because the graphic novel and comics, I'm sure looked like this, right? A lot of it, like the art style and everything. So at least you kind of have that as a visual. Like, you know what? I I imagine Natalie Portman must be so pissed when she watches like Mandalorian behind the scenes and they give, (laughs) they give Pedro Pascal, like literally I watched the Disney gallery the other day and literally it was daytime. They're like, Oh look, we can change it to night. And with a button, they just changed the whole setting to nighttime. Like, and it's like, Holy shit. And like now then back then you had Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman on a treadmill in just a green room like okay doc there you are or in the (laughs) hobbit there's like a really sad scene of like ian mckellen breaking down because he's like peter like i don't know what's going on there's because he had to act out a scene with the drawers but no one was there so they just had tennis balls and he's literally like (laughs) almost having like a breakdown and he's like i don't know what you want me to do here i can't act with these tennis balls i don't know what's happening he like walks off because he's just so overwhelmed oh yeah i'm sure it would be extremely difficult to try and get into a scene in a green room you yeah. know yeah i've seen a few of the behind the scenes things for some reason i don't own this movie i've just i own it digitally but mm-hmm. i don't have like the discs with the extras on it so it would be interesting to look at for sure yeah i love the like kind of call back to like the arcade dance dance revolution thing here of them like teaming up and right. combos and everything like that they did shoot an alternate ending where Scott ends up with knives. Oh. oh. Yeah, I know that's on the bonus stuff. I've I've watched it before, but it's been a few years. I think it yeah. was better for we'll this movie that. for him to end up with uh, Ramona because I just feel like they give them so much more screen time and things like that. And I, I feel at the end here, they try to bow tie her, like knives and him as like really being close together again. But I think it was like there wasn't enough time there to make that. If it would have been the end, it would be like, oh, okay. Like, I, I guess we're going with that, but. Yeah, I know that the author of the books, um, originally he was going to go with Scott ending up with nobody at the mm-hmm. end, which I think also would have been a really good ending, yeah. but but went with Ramona and I, and think I like on, it. Yeah. yeah, I think honestly, I thought the first time I watched this, who is going to end up with nobody, but uh, one little touch there, like when he was talking, how he like spat out a coin, almost like how someone's internal, like bleeding internally, right. and instead of a blood of being a little coin, that was lots so of fun. clever. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> the picking up all the money off the ground would be me. Yeah, wow. <laughs> there goes our deal. Yeah. How many times does she shoot herself in the head? It's quite a few in this movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a tripping hazard. That scarf, that's dangerous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, as video games, there's always one last bottle. Bass bottle. Bo- wow. One last bottle. All right. <laughs> one last bass bottle. Boss battle. <laughs> Nega Scott. I just love this ending. I'm just like, yeah, he's a cool guy. <laughs> just seeing like Michael Sarah in that form too, like all red eyed evil, everything like that. That's cool. <laughs> I 
We're get brunch next week. Tons of fun. That very clever. I don't know where I was. My like movie crashed multiple times during this, but I forgot to point out the like hair part thing that was trending on TikTok. But whenever Knives was doing her hair with her like highlights. Oh right, right. I thought you were talking about like Michael Shear's shaggy hair. I'm like, I think that's been trending since like the 70s, you know, like guys just like, I'm just going to grow it out. And that just looks like that. And like, oh, I'm not going to get a haircut. I think it's this Iron Man USB that you gave me. I think it just keeps disconnecting from my computer. So I have to like reload it because I'm trying oh, to yeah. load it off the it's, USB. It's not the greatest. Uh... USB, those ones, but that's all I had. <laughs> Fair warning before the, the watch along would have been solid. I didn't know you were watching it on that. I didn't give you Scott Pilgrim on that, though. So that's where it's not on me. It's not on me, folks. But, I mean, I could have been watching a different movie off of it and been like, whoa, what the hell? But not for the cast. That's what I don't have to worry about. <laughs> Is that one of those little action figure ones, like the Hulk one you gave me, Travis? Yeah. The Hulk one yeah, I got works I, perfect. I got Iron Man. <laughs> Uh, the rest of them suck. They're fun USB purchases, but I, I regret it. <laughs> He's trying to get rid of them now. Yeah. He doesn't want them back. I love the uh, kind of tying back to the original, the too cool for you anyways thing. And our hero sees the girl walking away, but he's going to stop her. I think him ending up with nobody is good too, but also it's just, it's a little like nice release of like, you know, he went through all his fight and mm -hmm. he does, he does get that girl, you know, he gets, he gets, yeah. he gets the dream girl it's literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're going to go through this door and just have a trippy life together. Have they ever talked about doing and not, you could do because it's it's one of those things of like I've actually never read them like with I'm a huge Fight Club fan, but there is sequels and I always hear the pitch like, oh, it's a fun idea. But I'm always like, I don't know if I need to. I don't know if I need to do that. Have they ever said like, oh, like I'm for sure not continuing this. Is it ever like what happened to them? Like, and is that even something you would want necessarily? I really like how it all gets wrapped up at the end. I don't think it needs a, any kind of sequel especially since it came out 10 years ago it kind of has a cult following and yeah. usually sequels after that amount of time don't work out that well mm. so what about I'm the actual comics did they mean it to always be like these stories and then done have they ever talked about any like reprise that or even anything like in the world as well right and i know they they made a scott pilgrim game mm -hmm. um <laughs> And I know they've been talking about, like, remaking it for newer consoles or whatever. I never played it, but I think that would be really cool to keep making video games out of it. I think that would be awesome, for yeah. sure. And there's, like a, like, a card game and stuff, too. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So... Nice. Well, t Taylor, I'll start. I'll start with you because you watched this, and then we'll go. We'll go around. Uh, what did you? Th what did you think, Taylor? <laughs> I, I think it's a very, very good movie. I, I like how it had a happy ending, <laughs> and um, yeah, he gets the girl, and the aesthetic was super, super awesome. It's funny because at the time that I watched it in theaters, I don't think my brain clicked that it was uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And then, like, now, like, just watching it, I don't even think, like, it still clicked in until, like, sitting down, like, watching, like, oh, that's my Sky High girl. Like, hell yeah. <laughs> don't call her that. Don't call her. Just because Madison's in the other room. 
Uh, I do want to <laughs> shout out two things. One, Taylor, obviously had some tech problems, but thanks for running it so everyone else is recording yeah. and all happy and happy. <laughs> so. And then the second thing, because I noticed this last time I was watching this movie, one of the um, effects supervisor for the company Ninja Ninja is Tim Miller. That's the guy that went on to go direct Deadpool and okay. Terminator, uh, whatever the fuck. One of the Terminators. I think it's Salvation or I don't know. There's so many of them. Oh, what was that one? Was he the was... one that got yelled at on set by... Uh... By Christian Bale? <laughs> no, no, I have them wrong. Not Salvation. <laughs> it's the newest Terminator. It's I don't know. It's that one where they all came back. But whatever. But anyways, I thought it was cool when I saw that he's like because he did he did a lot of um like trailers for video games as well, like cinematics and stuff. So it was cool Makes to see sense. like, oh, I know yeah. that guy. So Kirkland, what about you? Yeah, I uh I really liked it uh this time around. Like I said, I had only watched it the one time on Netflix. Was really, I don't know, I guess in the right mindset or my headspace like to be watching it. So I feel like mm-hmm. that left me walking away not enjoying it the most, but this time around is lots of fun. Not only just watching it with you guys, but I really like just like the arcade slash comic book aesthetic that they had um a lot of those little things that would pop up sound uh same thing with like spider verse right when it would just be like little comic blips that was really fun um i really liked i feel like i didn't realize how many actors i recognized were in this until this go around and yeah it was really fun and the one-liners were amazing all the fight scenes were awesome and i I really liked it i'm definitely gonna rewatch this sometime soon so oh that's thank you (laughs) <laughs> but, oh, I didn't get to the end there before with him destroying like the little end credit things there. That's cool. Oh yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, I'm the same as you. So yeah, this is my third time, and yeah, this one was uh, this one was fun because I got to watch it with you guys. So there's lots of thank you for the fun facts, Hansi. That was good because I yeah. don't know all those. But then yeah, it was it was it was good for one watching it and good just seeing Taylor run around. But yeah, I think it's just like it's kind of like <laughs> Edgar Wright. Like the good thing about him is he's not just all like style over substance. Like there's some directors that have that. But then there's not much substance there. I think he has that. But it's just like he has such a filmography and like between this and Baby Driver and some of the other stuff, it's just like he's such a creative dude. And I think that just kind of flows in this. And I, it's obviously I haven't read the comic books, but you feel like such like they have such a passion for the material and that just bleeds through. And like I think like I said the biggest comment I give it is kind of in that Spider-Verse realm of like, it always feels like it's alive. There's always moving. There's always something happening. And that's one thing I'd say is it's not one of those movies where even when I watched it again yesterday, it's like, I'm not on the phone much. Cause there is always something happening. There's not any really downtime for it. And I think the one forties like runtime was pretty good for that. So yeah, no, it, this, this was actually tons of fun as far as revisiting it. Cause it has been a, it'd been a, a while since I did. So Jessica, what about you? Yeah. Uh, as I had said before, I like this movie, so mm-hmm. I was not opposed to watching it again. I definitely like it. It's super fun to watch it with people, but I agree with Kirkland that I want to watch it again because, you know, there was things that I was looking for that um, just with things going on and, um, you know, listening to both soundtracks at once, both the GV and the movie, like, you know, I miss the I'm in lesbians with you line Mm, and I did miss the knives hair thing. You know, there's things that I was looking for that I missed. So, you know, as much as like it's it's fun to like hear all these different facts about the movie and saw and things like that but i definitely <laughs> am gonna go back and watch this again and just you know hear those little quips and one-liners that i missed this go around it, de- it makes me understand travis why you watched it like beforehand first as opposed why, to then I, I always do just so i kind of have an eye especially some of these movies i haven't seen in a long time like if i sit down and watch like the dark knight it's like okay i watched that like last week i could tell you i could give you a play a one-man show of it but usually i do because it's just uh there's always lots going on you know taylor eating orange juice or something (laughs) i mean (laughs) i've seen this movie enough that like i don't (laughs) feel like i missed anything um it's just like i knew that there was certain one-liners and then also um because hansi mentioned you know the there's seven like big x's marked around and so like trying to watch and keep an eye out for that and just little things that you know maybe i've missed when i've watched it before and not watched it with like kind of the same mindset i was thinking about it i don't think i've actually watched it it's been like three or four years so it would be good to watch it again and like look out for those easter eggs and see what other sock connections i can make Mm -hmm. (laughs) for sure Fancy last word on this. Yeah, I mean, this movie is so rewatchable, you know, mm. because there, it's so jam-packed with stuff. You have to really be locked in to catch 
every joke, every line. It's really quick, but that's what makes it so fun and so rewatchable. I think there's no other movie that is like it. It's totally unique and just packed with good actors and good script, good material. I just love it. It's one of my favorite movies ever. And yeah, I'm glad I'm glad we got to watch it together. That was fun. No, thank you very much for recommending because it, it was one of those, like I said, I haven't seen in a while. It was good to watch it with someone like you that is a massive fan of it. So there's like, and especially there's the comic books too, because I, as someone that reads comic books on the other side, that's always fascinating. Like, oh, well, they did this differently in alternate ending. So, uh, yeah. So I hope you all enjoy that. Please, everybody, go check out everything that Hansi promoted at the beginning and throughout. Uh, you guys produce some good stuff over there. And, uh, you, you know, it's been fun to know you. And, you know, it's just like some of the other patrons, you're just a good person, which is good. You know, that that's the biggest thing <laughs> we can say. So, uh, yeah, follow her everywhere. Where we are, you can just look down the description, and that's where we are. So, Taylor, you can uh, you can end this recording and end your merciful night. So uh, thank you very much, <laughs> and it will not be boring. Bye-bye. Ciao. Don't Ciao. close your Zencaster, by the way. Don't tell close it. Not, tell us not uploading. Leave, leave it open. Leave it open, and then you'll get like a notification of, like your files uploaded. Yeah, you can done. Okay. So, right, I was worried I'll... the call was gonna end, and then you're gonna close. Your, I it just yeah. <laughs> so don't do that. I'm just like see ya, peace out, shut down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. Oh. That was awesome. All right. Yeah, that was a fun time, everybody. Oh yeah, no thank 